Ooh. Here comes the music. Oh, that's a that's a good theme. He knows how to do start music themes, doesn't he? Hey, this is the return of the Ober Din. Or Dean. Dean. Uh, I love pronunciation ambiguity. It's created by Lucas Pope, like it says in the corner down there. Do you know who that you know what that means? He made he made papers, please. It's the first game. It's been five years. I'm excited. I don't I don't know a lot about this game, but I think we're solving murders or deaths via freeze frame where, where time stop ceases to pass. Kudos for not making an explicit direct follow-up of uh, Papers, Please, and making something t uh, once again totally different. People seem to be into it so far, so I'm glad to see. Sounds like he stuck the landing. Let's give it a shot. We're gonna be on a pirate ship. Might not be pirates, might just be a ship. <laughs> it's just easy to think pirate ship. Lost at Sea, 1803, the good ship. Oberdin. Built 1796. London, 800 tons. 18 foot drop. Captain R. Witterell. Crew, 51 men. Last voyage to Orient. Cape Rendezvous. That's hard to read. Oh, Rendezvous unmet. Okay. Contact East India. Oh, it's gone. That's fine. That was just the East India Company stuff. The Honorable East India Company. Attention, Chief Inspector. Insurance and Claims. London Office. The Oberdin is returned. Dispatched to Falmouth immediately and prepare a full assessment. Huh? The Lost at Sea Oberdin has arrived? Anyway? Is what we're supposed to take from this? Do I click to continue or... A space bar? There we go. Falmouth, England. 1807. Company man woke me up! Said you'd need ferry to the Oberdin. Not many eager for that job. Seems a bit late if you ask. I didn't. <laughs> What's in the box? I don't know. I'll hoist it up in a few minutes. Hey! How? Carefully. Hello. Oh, there's the Oberdin. Hello. So he's alive. Good for him. <laughs> this game looks way better in motion. I noticed that early on. I saw this, the screenshots and I saw the trailer and I'm like, man, the game looks pretty cool when it's moving and when it's... Because of the high detail at times, uh, and the simple style crossed with the high detail, some of the screenshots look really not great, because it's really hard to make out when it's not moving. But the, the motion kind of adds life to it. A little bit like, a uh, Unfinished Swan, actually, at times. Can I jump? Nope, not with spacebar, at least. E zooms. Okay. The particular look. I also believe you can, yep. You can do a few things. Perfect. Wah. <laughs> a parody of control. This is the names they gave the, the, the freaking mouse speeds. A parody of control unreasonably fast. Reasonably fast. Fast side of perfect. Perfect. Slow side of perfect. Just slow. Slug it. Str st Strugglish. Nearly motionless. <laughs> I'm gonna go slow side of perfect. It's going a little fast for me. These are fun. Maximum, nearly maximum, comfortably loud. Just about middle, in the middle. Just below middle. Below, quite quiet. Barely audible. Muted. No, I have, I have, I have, I'm on a computer. I have my own control of audio, so I don't, I don't really ever change the audio of games that much. Monitor Macintosh. IBM 5151. Oh god. Oh, that'll make me that'll make me uncomfortable. All right. Zenith ZVM 1240 1240. Isn't this fun? That's kind of neat. Commodore 1084. Huh. 
What's that? What's that over there? It's like a, st a sun over there. Oh, right click also zooms. Okay. IBM 8503. That's where we started, right? That's fun. Oh, no, that's not where I started. LCD. This is pure black and white. I do like the depth of color. Not depth of color, I mean, but like I do enjoy the contrast of just pure black on white. A little bit. It is kind of tempting. And then back to the Macintosh. Yeah, I mixed up the Macintosh with the IBM for a second there. I like that it has a little... It actually has a little, like... What is it? It's like the sound you would get when you press, like, the power button on an old piece of computer where it just kind of had a clunk to it and everything. I think I actually do like that one. I do kind of like the LCD. Yeah, I, 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 like, I, like the, I like the solid black. Okay. Can I interact with you at all? Nope. That is, that is, I didn't imagine that. That is out there. Is that actually the sun or something, I wonder? Or there some kind of reflection? It's way the hell out there. Who knows when he's going to get that box up here, which I probably need. And there's a corpse. Hi, there. Oh, it's a very degraded corpse. Just bones and clothing. Do I click on it? Or anything? We're just gonna- we're going right in here with no indication of how mechanics work. Does something happen if I zoom in on that star? No, not really. Ah! You want to try harder? We all got our work to do here, right? Or do I need to grab one of these ropes, I wonder? I haven't really figured out how to interact with the game yet. See, does shift sprint? No. Or it doesn't make you move any faster at all, really. Can't get it up here, or what? What do you want? It's too heavy! Lift it yourself! Aren't you a pain in the ass? Give you one task, dude. It's too heavy. Take it yourself or open it here. Hey. Okay. Oh. We have a book. Cool. A. D. Return of the Oberdin. A catalog of adventure and tragedy, 1807. Preface. I trust that you now find yourself aboard the Oberdin. I expect this day to come. I expected this day to come, and my every intention was to tell the ship's strange tale within the pages of this book. Regrettably, Failing health has allowed me to produce only the basic outline that follows. Your presence on the Oberdin is critical. I leave the discovery of its fate and the completion of this book in your hands. The next few pages will seem bewildering at first. All will make sense in time. Use the pocket watch to determine the identity and fate of everyone aboard. Complete each chapter accurately and return the book by guaranteed post to the French Office of Affairs in Morocco. The bargain chapter will remain unknown to you. I possess the details within, but have elected to keep them private for now. Henry Evans. Hello. What is this? The journey, the ship, the crew, life at sea sketch. And then it goes over to the other side. We go to the ch we go to the ten chapters then, as far as as far as page order goes. Then on the left side of the screen, you can then see after the ten chapters, it goes to the glossary and the back cover. Okay. 
We have 10 chapters to solve our way through. Loose cargo, a bitter cold, murder. The calling, unholy captives. Soldiers of the sea, the doom, the bargain, the escape, and the end. The Atlantic leg of the Far East route, so that's where it was lost. For the trip it was supposed to be on. The map of the ship, not really the most detailed thing, probably won't be using that. Maybe a little bit. There's perhaps a little information. Is my mouse here? It is here. Oh. Oh, I click on them. Oh! Okay. This could be very important then. Okay, I'm getting a little... I'm getting my call back to papers, please, here. We have actual paperwork to navigate in this game, as you'd expect. So I can use the mouse wheel or I can just scroll along the bottom and it kind of goes faster, honestly. I don't really know what to look for here yet, but that's Africa right there, Cape Verde, Canary Islands. There's Europe. Okay, so I can look about around the ship way better now. Okay, good to know. There's the main deck. Passenger cabins, captain's cabins. Okay, so if I need to know where a location is, I can find it with, the, with this map pretty well then. It's a bummer that it's so- this feels really awkward, this- the wiggling of the stick. But wiggling the mouse is clearly faster than, uh, mouse wheeling, which goes this fast. <laughs> okay. Carpenter's shop, starboard walk. That's upstairs, right? No, it's the bottom. Orlop deck, gun deck. Yeah, the main deck is the surface, right? Yeah. The gun deck is where the cannons are. Then below that, yeah. The crew. Complete crew and passenger manifest. So we, this is the 51 crew members. We need to solve what happened to each of them. 60 crew members. Why did it say 51? Maybe it didn't... Uh, let's see. Seaman, seaman, topman, midshipman. Ah, uh, the passengers might not count. One, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They probably didn't count. An artist might not count. That might account for the that not being the right number of people. Though so that's nine people. Those nine people probably didn't count as crew members. Whereas these all look like crew members. Yeah. Sketches of life aboard the Oberdin. Ooh. Oh, it zooms in on the individual characters. That's interesting. Underway. Am I crazy or is that more blurry when I highlight it than it is on the screen? I feel like the preview window is blurrier than the thing I'm highlighting in the first place. Huh. I remember reading about how they did went through a ton of iterations in Papers, Please to make the faces detailed but not too detailed. Mostly implied and so on. They want you because they want you to be sympathetic, and they're trying to make and they were they're figuring out how making the characters less detailed sometimes helps with that. These characters are once again super undetailed, but all unique and separately drawn. They're clearly all different people, and it looks believable. This vaguely looks like a Macintosh equivalent of those types of uh, those paintings you would see of these eras. So this is underway as the... they probably just took off and they're having a celebration. There was royalty on board. For Mawson royalty. There's justice at sea. Somebody was apparently hung and then shot? That's a really complicated execution. Holy shit. That must have been... he must have been the murderer or was suspected of being the murderer since there's a chapter called Murder. This person does not seem happy. The person I can't highlight them with this mouse because it goes to this guy. I guess if their face doesn't face the screen, then I can't use this for them. So we have three pictures to help us probably identify people. Chapter 1, Loose Cargo. On the cargo deck. Okay, click... Chapter 2, A Bitter Cold. Alright, so I gotta try to figure out how to fill this in now. Is Skim through the entire book first. Okay, they want me to look through the whole book. Cool. On the Orlop deck. 
outside the first mate's window. <clears throat> the calling. They want me to skim even though it's full of empty pages. Alright, I like the page turn effect. That's a cool gradient they'd use to make the shadow like that on the bow, on the deck. Add the captain's quarters. Ooh. Chapter 8, Bargain. This chapter will remain unknown to you until you leave the ship and return the book to me. H-E. Oh, it took me back to here. Weird. That's interesting, yeah. Chapter 8 of all ones is the one I can't finish. In the Lazaret, Escape. In the Midshipman... Outside the captain's quarters. Some inside the captain's quarters. Sometimes it's circled and sometimes it's not. Ooh. Find indications of certain words arriving, I guess? Oh, what's that? Like, Captain... Is it a description of the... Yep, head officer in command of the ship. Responsible for directing the off, uh, other officers and ensuring the success and safety of the captain's voyage. Let's try Bosun. I'm curious about that word, because I just read Junji Ito's Frankenstein, and he kept referring to the, what seemed like the captain or something as being the bosun, but I guess he was the captain. The alternate... Oh, that's alternate words, right? Or boatswain and bosun. Foreman in charge of the general crew operations and the, the equipment required to sail, sail the ship. So it's almost like the second in command or something, but more like for on a logistical level, because I think the mate is the second in command, right? Officer or tradesman that supports and assists their superior. The general mates help to uh, run the ship and serve the captain's request. Tradesman mates serve their su supervisor. Right, so if you're the first mate, then you're the mate of the captain, but otherwise, I think it's had the list of stuff like the uh, carpenter's mate, which would be the person that helps the carpenter. We'll get back to that when I need to. Yeah, tab opens and closes the book as I figured. Q's table of contents, good to know. What's this? Can't interact with that? Okay. Memento mortem. Remember death. We're done with the rest of it? That was all that was in there, was a book and a, and a compass? And you needed the whole thing to come up with you? I take it back, you're the one that's kind of at fault, dude. Why'd you need that guy to carry that stuff in the first place? Alright, so how do I use the compass? Well, that solves that mystery. Captain! Open the door! Kick it in! Ah! Uh -huh. Lest we break it down and take more than those shells! You bastards may take exactly what I give you! Okay. Yeah, I figured I'd be seeing a body back there. Is that the guy that, got, that I just saw, or...? Yeah, location-wise, that should be his body, right? Is that a door I go to to leave the murder scene, I guess? It's a metaphysical door, because that, that wasn't there, space-wise. This is a cool- this is a cool visual. Alright. So you were trying to break in, and the captain was like, Nah, fuck y'all, you're dead. And, uh... You got busy. Okay, so you're the captain. Let's, uh, work on identifying you, huh? And he used a gun to shoot that guy. Good to know. Dude's got a... Who is that? It's second guy. Oh! Wait, what's happening? How does this game work? Ah, were they giving me a chance to look around? Are we starting with the end? Okay. Gun, yes. It's a body found outside the captain's quarters. Accurate. 
Who is this and how did they die? He yelled, Captain. There were three others present. Location of the corpse. Can I watch the scene again? Is that what this is? Captain, open the door. Kick it in. As we break it down and take more than those shells, you bastards may take exactly what I give you. So we're finding out how this guy died. Who is this guy and how did he die? Let's figure this out. This unknown soul met an unknown fate. No, he was shot. Let's be sure about that. How do I say shot? Shot. With a gun. This unknown soul was shot with a gun by an unknown attacker. Cool, got him. Person's fate appears blurred throughout the book. This blurring indicates you don't have significant information to determine their identity. The fate may be known and can be entered now. Trying to name them while their face is blurred would be unproductive. Carry on and pay attention. This is a fun little tutorial. Faces will become unblurred when the information necessary to identify them has been revealed in some way. Okay, so I can't identify him because no names have been given. The other guy at least is the captain, so I know who he is. But can I identify him, I wonder? Location of the corpse. Interesting. It just shows just shows me on the boat where he where he died. Three others were present. Shot, gun, unknown. So that's him. That's the death. That's the guy who died. That's probably the captain, judging by the cool hat. And that's probably the guy that's standing right over there. Unknown. This, this person's face is no longer blurred, which means that they can now be identified. Use the book and the pocket watch to gather enough information to deduce their identity. Revisit memories on the ship using the pocket watch to study relationships, appearances, and activities. Use the book, map, uh, crew manifest, and artist sketches, pages 2 to 4, along with individual conversation logs to find clues about this guy. There were 60 people on the ship when I left England. Determine everyone's identity and fate will not be easy. This size of information is rare. You will, you will have to make assumptions using partial information. Some identities may only be revealed through a process of elimination. Good luck. I like that my narration has it has instrumentation. <laughs> Alright, well you should be pretty easy, right? Because you are Captain Robert Whitwell. Got it. Nailed it. Cool. Cab Captain Robert Whitwell. This guy was shot by a gun, but we don't know what happened. Yeah, we don't, we don't know how this guy died. We don't know who this guy is. And we know nothing about this guy besides the fact that he's currently a witness. And apparently he shot this guy. Evidently. Okay, yeah. So I was right to say that these zoom-ins were weirdly low detail, because they become very much not low detail later on. Guy makes neat games. Okay. What's going on? Oh, I'm back here. Yeah, you were very much shot with that gun. You had an axe. That's interesting. I wonder if you'll kill anybody else with an axe. Or, if, like, is that why he has one? See, you're wearing... I mean, you might just be a generic crewman as far as your costume goes. I don't know if there's much to be drawn from that. You are curious. You have an axe. You seem to be wearing a jacket that looks more important, but you're, and you're weirdly, like, seem to be not wearing a shirt and it's open. Odd look, but okay. Hello, Captain. Pretty sure that's you. I've heard this game just completely drops you in, too, and you just kind of have to figure it out from there. So we can't go into that room to find any potentially useful information. We just know that he'd very much shot that guy. Which might be the only information to be gleaned from right now. Oh, the door's even open. So let me in. Nobody up here? Okay. Oh, hi. Other guy who has a knife. How do you do? I don't think I have a way of identifying you, though. Alright. You got my interest. Let's walk through the creepy void. That is unnerving, how reality ceases to exist around you. Alright. 
But I think I you think I triggered it by clicking. The little watch like pops out when I'm near a target. I've already been up here, so I don't think I saw anyone around here. No. Nope. We'll probably use this kind of location in the future during flashbacks and whatnot, but I don't think I'm going to be uh, finding people around here. Is there any bodies hanging from up here? Because they, they hung that one guy up, but not like death by hanging. They were just hanging him from up there to shoot him, I guess. That was a, that was a peculiar and rather extremely uh, complicated mode of uh, execution. Just carefully walk directly over this corpse. Ooh, this opens. Ooh, can I open these or the crouch, control, C, Z, X, V. Is there a controls button? Oh, view. Okay, so that's reading. No. We can pause with an escape. We can, yeah, space bar is action, E is zoom. That's it. All right, that's all the controls. Can I open you guys? Can't open any of these drawers at all, huh? Hmm. We're not getting text text information from that stuff. Oh! Is that the captain? That's a cool transition. It was kind of horrifying the first time. Must be in here someplace. <laughs> They're at... The bottom of the sea. That's a lie. Oh, wow. Quite a murder. So you... Did you stab him successfully? Maybe. That looks like I might be going into him. I'm not super clear. That definitely went into him. There's a cloud of blood everywhere. Yeah. So you, you, you slit that guy's throat with a knife. We know that guy's method of death, except we don't really know who he is. Ah, you just got shot to death. So you're the captain. So the other guy that was right next to him, is he still wearing his hat? Yeah. Why? Oh, it's doing this again. I guess it does it on a timer? When it thinks I've realized everything? Or maybe just when the song's over. Who is this, and how did they die? Uh, well, they were stabbed, or slashed, or something. Decapitated, not quite, but not completely wrong yet. They're alive to drowned. Okay, so you can mouse wheel, but the mouse wheel makes you move by an entire page. Alive is actually an option. You can be eaten, that's one of the options. Wow. Illness. Killed by a sword. Knifed. Knifed sounds accurate. Speared is in here. We don't have confirmation that guy's dead yet, so I'm, I don't think I'm gonna go with the captain being speared yet, but this guy's been knifed. By unknown attacker? No, it was by, it was by Robert Wittrell. Captain Robert Wittrell. We don't know who he is though, huh? Yeah, his their faces are still blurry, which seems to indicate that we don't know how they died. Fun implication of a mystery here, or some other thing going on. Where are they? Must be in here someplace. They're at the bottom of the sea. That's a lie. As far as I can tell, the rule here is the person with the X is the, is the victim. Meanwhile, the people without an X can be anyone. Like, this was the guy next to the victim, and this was the captain. And they're not marked differently at all. But these are clearly the victim. So he was talking about opening the door. This guy, after seeing his friend die, attacked him, the captain. He's looking for something which is at the bottom of the scene now. When they said, where are they, at first I was thinking, you know, people. But now I'm thinking, gems, jewels, whatever they found. 
death location's pretty straightforward, I suppose. The end, part two. The others, two others were present. That's him. Why well, did I say two others were present? Three others were present. Ah. That's, oh, right. Last time there was three of those present because this guy was climbing the, the ladder. Maybe he's nearby again? Hmm. 